Okay, hello everyone. Um, uh, my name is Bill Sauce. I am uh, the um, Brown Center Faculty Fellow for Digital Remote Learning. I'm also a uh, uh, assistant professor of practice in the Department of uh, Business Systems and Analytics. And what I plan to do uh, today and over the next few days is to um, go over Canvas, which is the new learning management um, platform that we're using um, at Stetson. And we switched over from Blackboard to Canvas. And uh, I've had uh, some experience with Canvas uh, over the summer. Uh, as you can see, I have a couple classes here that I taught uh, using Canvas. So I was one of the first ones um, to start using it. And I had a lot of success with it, um, probably more so than Blackboard. Uh, I found it better and easier to use in Blackboard, um, but it is a bit different. So what I plan to do during these sessions is to go over how you could uh, build a course in Canvas and um, set it up for your fall semester and to work with maybe some of those imported Blackboard courses that IT gave you, which if you've gone into them, they may look a little bit confusing. So I hope to, to simplify it a bit for you. Um, I'm not gonna touch upon every single aspect of Canvas. Um, IT or OLED is actually, they have workshops that you may have attended that they put together some tutorials that will show you all of, all of the features. Uh, what I'm gonna plan on doing is um, just kind of step through how to, how, just how to build your course. So you can have something up and running um, by the time the fall semester begins. And I also went ahead and put together a document of all the steps I'm going to go through, um, which um, Chris Griffin, I believe, uh, just sent to everyone. So it's quite a number of pages, but a lot of it is um, illustrations. So these are the steps I'm going to walk through over the next three days. Um, and you can follow along in this if you'd like. And let me go ahead and start. So when you log into Canvas, um, the first thing you're going to see, of course, is your dashboard. And um, hold on, sorry. OK, thanks, Chris. Yeah, so the materials you should receive and uh, or you should have received 10 minutes ago. OK, thank you. So the first thing you see is your dashboard. Um, if you taught over the summer, maybe you have some published courses like I do up here. Um, and if you haven't taught yet, you probably have a bunch of unpublished courses. I think what IT did is they went ahead and um, they gave us all of our courses for the fall and even some in the spring. I have some spring courses here as well. Uh, and you'll also see some BB imports and the BB imports are those courses that came from Blackboard. Okay. Um, and I think Basically what they did is they sent you the most recent version of that course. So for example, uh, the one I'm gonna be working with is the programming for analytics. And they sent me the one that I taught over the summer, um, last summer of uh, 2020, uh, which was the last time I taught that. And if you click in one of these Blackboard import courses, now you may have been instructed that you could well, go ahead and work from this and you could build your Canvas course. But when you go in, you look at it, it's, it's a bit overwhelming because you may see something like this, right? Which doesn't look anything like your Blackboard course. And the reason is because of course, Canvas is a totally different system. Um, so in terms of the organization of the course, it probably looks completely different, but it does actually do a good job. The migration uh, does a good job with um, keeping your quizzes uh, pretty much the way they are. Uh, there are some subtle differences that I'll go over uh, tomorrow with that, keeping the assignments the way they are and things like that. But things that are different, of course, would be the structure. Uh, the grade book is a little different and, um, and things like that. So, so what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna talk mostly about how you can structure your course because that is probably going to have to be reworked completely by all the instructors, even if they're given this Blackboard import. Okay, so this is what my Blackboard import looks like. And as you can see, basically what these are, all these little boxes we see that say course introduction, mind tap, respond as browser. These are what we call modules. 
in Canvas. And in Canvas, everything is basically a module. Okay, you'll be working from modules and there are ways to enhance your course if you wanna go beyond modules and I'll, I'll go into that today. But for the most part, the most basic component in Canvas is a module. So in Blackboard, you may have learned that, you know, the way to set up your course is to create what they call content areas. And we had a navigation menu in Blackboard and you can add a content area and put all your different links in your navigation menu. It doesn't work like that in Canvas. In Canvas, the navigation menu is pretty much, um, uh, you can't really modify it. Uh, there are workarounds, which I'll show you, but for the most part, the way Canvas is built, you don't really add links on the left-hand side here. Okay, what you do is you work with the modules and you'll notice there is a modules link here. Okay, and the modules link is also sent, is also linked to the home link. So the home by default is pointing to modules. So whether you click on home or whether you click on modules, you're going to see the same thing here uh, on the page. Okay, so <clears throat> if you did have it set up in Blackboard like I did where you had several content areas on the left-hand side with those links, well, those content areas now in Canvas are modules. So for example, I had a little, I had a nice little link on the left-hand side in Blackboard that said course introduction, which was my homepage. And now notice I don't have that on the left anymore, but course introduction became my first module that I see up here at the top. And then within my course introduction, I had some content, uh, uh, content areas, such as a little welcome message. Uh, I had another um, area that told them about Collaborate Ultra, which was the, um, uh, which was the um, uh, um, lecture platform I used at the time, the virtual classroom. And then I also had an area for the syllabus. So what they ended up doing in Canvas when I got migrated over is they gave me a module called course introduction and then they gave me module items for each of those three different um, postings that I had on that page, okay? And what they did is they ended up, right, converting them to these different, uh, what they call pages and attachments within my module. So within your module, you can have different item types and Canvas does the best it can do with what's coming through on Blackboard. So for welcome, for example, they made a page and if I click on it, it brings me to the welcome page, which does a pretty good job at looking just like it did in, in Blackboard. Okay. Um, it also made my announcement about Collaborate Ultra a page, right? So I click on that, it opens up this page about Collaborate Ultra, which of course we won't be using anymore. Um, and then I, I posted a syllabus link as well. And what they did is they made that an attachment. So when I click on that, it opens the syllabus. So all the, the files come over too. So if you had a file in Blackboard, like I had a, I had a, um, uh, a, a, res, a, a syllabus file, it went ahead and copied it over here and I see it here, okay? So, so that's good. But again, this isn't exactly how I would wanna present it to the students. So I'm gonna to need to change some things um, in, in Canvas, okay? So you have a couple of different options. Um, you could work with this BB import course if you want and you know, move things around and things like that, and then copy the entire course over to your fall, fall course, or you can work from your fall course and maybe copy things over in pieces. Uh, and that's what I prefer to do. So that's what I'll be doing in this, um, in this workshop. But again, if you wanna work directly from the BB import and then just take it and copy the whole thing over, uh, you could do that as well. The only downside with doing it that way is um, if you are to use a third party learning management system like, um, or a learning platform like McGraw-Hill or Pearson My Lab or Cengage MindTap like I do, um, if you set it up in your BB import and then copy the whole course over to a new Canvas course for the fall, 
um, that link may get broken. So if you are using a third party learning platform, like I use MindTap, probably best to just work from your fall course and copy over the pieces you need from your Blackboard import, okay? So that's how I'll be doing it here uh, today. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my dashboard and I'm going to go ahead and click on my fall 2021 programming for analytics course, which I haven't touched yet. So this is just a clean slate, okay? And when I click in here, right, I don't have anything in here yet. So, and again, like I said, by default, it's gonna take you to that modules page. So it's telling me now I need to create a new module, okay? So that's really the whole intent of, of you know, of Canvas is when you set up your course is you just want to start and create your modules. So the question is, well, how are you going to set up your modules? And, and that's all up to you. It's all how you want to organize your class. So if you want, for instance, modules to be different weeks within your semester, you could do that. That's how I'll set it up. Um, if you want it to be, you know, chapters within your book uh, that you're using, you could do that. If you want it to be separated by assignment types, maybe have a module for exams, a module for quizzes, a, a, a module for homework, you could do that too. Um, I like to actually step student through the course um, within my within my uh, Blackboard or Canvas class. So, like when I was in Blackboard, um, I set it up. Basically, I used the OLED template. So, if you're familiar with the OLED template they did have weekly modules on the left hand or weekly links on the left hand side. And I continued that in Canvas. And, and I like that because it kind of walks the students through. And another good thing about that is um, you could, and, and I'll show you this in a bit, you can determine when the module is going to be posted. You can also have a prerequisite. So for instance, they can't get the week two until they finish week one, things like that. So if you were to sort it out that way, it'll make a, probably a lot more sense to the student. So that's how I'm gonna do it. Um, so I'm gonna create a new module. You could click on this button here, or you could click on the plus module button in the upper right to create your module. And the first thing you're going to do is put in the module name, okay? Now I already created my syllabus, so I'm gonna actually build my course working off of my syllabus here and I'm going to look at my tentative schedule and build my module this way, my modules this way, okay? So now the way I, I tend to teach this class is I cover the material of the course of two weeks. And the week one is just one day for me because it's a Monday, Wednesday, Friday class. So week one is just Friday where I cover the syllabus. So what I'm gonna do is for my first module, I'm gonna just skip week one for now and I'm gonna create a module, I'm gonna call it week two and three. And within week two and three, I'm going to put all the activities and readings and homework um, that I want the students to do for that week. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna name it. Okay, so for the module name, I'm gonna call it weeks two and three. Okay, now what you could do if you'd like is you could say lock until, and then you could put a date here. So for example, my modules, my, my week two starts on 823. So I could say, I'm gonna lock it until 823. Um, but for now, I'm just gonna keep it the way it is. I'm not gonna lock it, okay? So it, it, will, be, it will be there. Um, it won't be available to the student yet. Uh, it doesn't become available until you publish it, okay? And the way you know it's published is there's a little not sign here. And if you click on the not sign, it will turn into a green checkbox. And that means it's published. That means the students can now see it. So when you create a module, um, it's not gonna be published just yet. So you can work with it and the students won't see it until you click that button, okay? All right, so my first module, I'm gonna call it weeks two and three. Now, each of my weekly modules are gonna be laid out the same way, okay? So usually the way I set it up is I have a, a area for uh, the weekly objectives, you know, what the student will be learning, um, what they're gonna need to be, what they're gonna need to read. And I put some links to the textbook so they can read the textbook. Um, sometimes I'll put a folder with slides if, I'm, if I am um, using slides for that particular week. 
uh, in class assignments, homework, and quizzes. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to structure my module that way. Okay. Now it does say you could drag files here to add to the module. Um, so if you just want to throw some files in there, you could drag and drop them. Uh, I'm not going to do that because I'm first going to set it up with these headers that I was just talking about. Okay. And to set it up, what you're going to want to do is click the plus sign. Okay. Which is in the module header here on the right hand side It's right next to that not sign I was talking about before. And when you click the plus sign, what this does is it says, okay, what type of item would you like to add to your module? And you can add an assignment, you can add a quiz, you can add a file, you can add a page, you can add a discussion. And I don't have any of these yet because this is a brand new course. Um, and again, you could import it from your Blackboard import if you'd like and then add it here. Uh, but again, I'm gonna just do it from scratch for now. <clears throat> and these are all the different types of items that you can add. And you can also put um, an external URL. So if you want to put a link to an external website, you can do that or even an external tool. Um, but for now, I'm just going to put a text header. And what a text header is going to do is it's going to separate the module out into different areas. Okay. So it's sort of like when I was in Blackboard, I had a content page. And then within the content page, I had content areas. Okay. So in Canvas, my content page is now a module. And within my module, I'm going to have text headers that are basically going to separate out each, each of each type of assignment that I give for that week. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put a text header. And it's going to ask me to put in the title of the of the header. Okay. And again, I always start off with the weekly objectives. So I'm going to put objectives for my header. And you can indent it too. Okay, now since this is at the top level of my module, I'm not going to indent it at all. I'm just going to say don't indent. I'm going to say add item. Okay, so there it is. Okay, now I'm going to add another one. Okay, I'm going to call it readings. Okay. And I'm going to add um, slides. Okay. Next, I'm going to add in-class assignments. Okay. And then homework. And then quizzes. Or just, I'm just going to put quiz here. Okay. So, You'll notice that if you look on the left side navigation, a lot of these links are actually um, actually match my my headers. So, for example, we have an assignments link, um, we have a files link, we have a, a quizzes link, and and you can keep these links open too. So, for example, if you just want to tell your students, you know, we're going to have a quiz, and you'll find it under quizzes on the left hand side. I mean, that's your ch choice. Um, what I tend to do is I tend to hide, and I'll show you how to do this in a bit, but I tend to hide a lot of the links on the left-hand side because I really want the students to go through the modules, right? So they know that, okay, we have a quiz this week, so I have to go to the weekly module and find the quiz under the quiz header, right? Or where do I, where do I get the homework, right, for this week? Oh, I'll just go to the module and I'll go to the homework section. <clears throat> so that's how I like to organize uh, the class. But again, you could just keep, for instance, the assignments link open, but they'll have to know to go in there and find the assignment in that on that page. Okay. So again, all these are right now are just headers. Okay. So they're just labels. You can't click on them. You can't open them. Um, you know, they're, they're, it's just a way to organize your module. Okay. Now, <clears throat> um, now, a lot of what I do, uh, a lot of the items that I'm going to post actually come from MindTap. So, for example, the objectives, the readings, um, the, um, uh, the homework, um, the, these are all part of MindTap. So, before I can actually add any items there, I'm going to need to set up my MindTap course, um, which I'll do tomorrow. And my in-class assignment and my quizzes, I, I give through Canvas. So those are going to be Canvas assignments. 
So I'll set those up as well uh, tomorrow. So tomorrow what I'll do is I'll show how to set up an assignment. I'll also show how to set up a quiz and um, we'll take a look at how we can integrate with a third party platform and have links to those assignments that may be in those platforms, okay? But for now, this is how I'm going to structure uh, my module. Now, each week, I kind of have it set up the same way, all right? So every week or every two weeks in this class, they're gonna have a module, which is gonna have the objectives, the readings, the slides, what they'll have to do in class, what the homework's going to be and what, you know, and the quiz they're gonna be taking. Um, so what I'm gonna need to do then is I'm going to have to go ahead and create another module called week four and five, another one called week six and seven, and I'd like it all structured the same way. And then the nice thing about Canvas and the modules is you can actually duplicate them. So since I have the same structure for each module, what I could do is I could click on the three dots here right next to that plus sign. And this gives you a menu of everything you can do with this module. Um, and I'm gonna duplicate it, okay? So I'm gonna duplicate this module. Okay, and I'll put down here weeks two and three copy. And then what I can do is I could click on the three dots. I can say edit and I can change the name to weeks four and five and hit update module. So now I have my next module too. So this way I don't have to keep creating those headers each time. Okay, and I'll do it one more time here. I'll duplicate. Okay, and I'll edit. And I'll call this weeks six and seven. Okay. And that's basically it in terms of setting up the module. Uh, and now, of course, the next step would be to start adding in all of your items, right? Start adding your quizzes, uh, start putting in your assignments, um, putting links to your homework. And um, if you want, you could do that right, you can actually bring in the assignments from your Blackboard course, okay? So, and I'll show you quickly how to, how we can do that actually. Um, so like I said, you can set it up and then just bring things in one by one. And if you wanna do that, you could just put now from the home tab, again, I'm still in home, okay? On the right-hand side, you'll see import existing content, okay? If you click on that button, Okay, it's gonna say content type. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, now you could say uh, copy uh, Canvas course. This will copy over the whole course by default. Okay, now of course we don't have Blackboard anymore. Blackboard's gone. So anything we copy over now is gonna be from a Canvas course. So I'm gonna say copy a Canvas course. And then you choose the Canvas course you wanna copy on the, over. So you can say, so mine's called BB Import Programming for Analytics. Now, if you wanted to bring over the whole course, so let's say you wanted to work with that BB Import and then just copy the whole thing over when you're done and make it your full course is all you have to do. And then you just, you would say all content and then click import. It also has an option to adjust events and due dates. So if you want to, let's say adjust the date. So the assignment is now dated for the fall semester as opposed to last spring, you can do that too. Um, but this is just all you would need to do if you do work with that BB import, you said, listen, I just did everything in here. Now I got to copy everything to fall. This is how you would do it, okay? But since I don't like the structure of the BB import, and since I'm kind of structuring it differently and I just want to copy over one thing at a time, you could just say select specific content and you do have to click that import button first. It's a little odd because you have to import it before it can actually see the content, right? So, um, so just be careful about that. I know in Blackboard, when you did an import in Blackboard, you say select specific content, you'll actually see all the list of things in that course, right? That you can then select and bring in. Not here, first thing you need to do is click the import, okay? And then it will say waiting for selection and then you hit the select content. Okay. So here's everything um, from that Blackboard course. So if you say, well, okay, um, let's say I want to bring over my quiz and what do I call it? I guess I call it chapter one and two quiz. 
All right, so I say, okay, I'd like to bring over quiz and put that in my weekly module. I could just go ahead and select that one and say select content, or you can even click on, you know, all of the quizzes, you know, whatever you want to bring over. Okay, I'm going to select the content. Okay, and it will say it's queued. And depending on how many, how many uh, items you're bringing over, it may take a little long to import. But since this is just one quiz, it already says completed. And if I go to the quizzes link over here on the left hand side, right, here's my quiz that I just brought over. Okay. And I'll go deeper into the quizzes tomorrow. But like I was saying, it does a pretty good job with the um, importing of the quiz. So if I go to edit here to edit the quiz um, and look at the questions, it actually, um, oh, maybe maybe it didn't do such a good job. I have, I have my questions set up in pools. So, okay, so it didn't bring over my pool questions. All right. So it's not perfect. If you have your quizzes set up where you just have, you know, it's just a set of questions that you created a very simple quiz in Blackboard. Typically the import is pretty good. Um, but if you do use pools like I do, it looked like it, it, the pools didn't copy over right. Um, let me see if, yeah, I may actually have to bring over the questions. Maybe that's what it didn't do. Okay, so what it didn't do is, and I'm sorry, I'm jumping a little ahead here. It looks like it didn't bring over the pool of questions with the quiz. So I may have to do that as well. So let me go back to import existing content. And let me select my Blackboard course again. Here, so they refer to them as question banks. Okay, so probably what I would need to do is bring over the question banks that I used for that quiz. And I'd have to figure out, I have so many question banks here, as you can see, uh, I'd have to figure out which ones I used. Um, okay. All right, so yeah, so th what, it, what it also does is it will actually make your quizzes question banks too. So some of these assignments here, like my lecture assignments, I make quizzes because quizzes are the only way that you can actually assign an access code. So I'd like the students to come to class and do these lecture assignments using a code. So my quizzes came over as question banks. And then my pools of questions also came over as question banks. So that's how Canvas sees it. Um, so again, I'll get more into this tomorrow. Uh, I'm not gonna spend too much time with it now, but as you can see, it still sees it as a quiz though, even though there's no questions in it. So I do have a quiz here. And then what you can do is in your module, you can go ahead and under the quiz header, click on the three dots. Oh, I'm sorry. No, you would, you would go back up here to your weeks two and three header, hit the plus sign. I, I'm sorry, hit the plus sign. And then you can say add quiz because I have a quiz now. And the quiz is the chapter one and two quiz. And you can say add item, okay? And there it is, okay? Now the six dots that you see on the left will allow you to drag and drop this wherever you want. So I can put it under any of the headers that I want to. And since it's a quiz, I'm just gonna leave it here at the bottom. But to make it look a little cleaner, you can click on the three dots and say increase indent, okay? And if you increase the indent, it will show you which header it belongs under. Okay, so tomorrow what I'll do is I'll walk you more through the quizzes. I'll create a quiz, I'll also create an assignment and we'll bring those over into the, the modules so we can see how we can fully set up our, our, our weekly modules, okay? Okay, the next thing is, so, so basically you could just do this for your class and say, okay, this is how I'm gonna set up my class. I'm gonna set it up with weekly modules. When the students log into my course, the home page by default is going to be the weekly modules and they're going to see all their assignments here and that's how I'm going to do it. Okay. And, and that's fine. Um, or you could 
enhance your uh, course by setting up what they call pages. And you can think of pages as a web page. Uh, as a matter of fact, I believe the, the code behind the pages in Canvas is actually HTML. Um, so it's a way to kind of um, pretty up your course a bit. You don't have to use pages again, like I said, but you know, if you wanna make it a bit more pleasing for the student, um, you can do that. And as I mentioned, when I was in Blackboard, what I did is in Blackboard, I had a welcome page and the welcome page was the first thing they saw. Now, of course, in Blackboard, that was called a content page, um, but I wanna do the same thing here in, in Canvas. So when the student logs in, instead of just seeing the modules, I want them to see a nice welcome page that you know maybe tells them a little bit about the course, tells them a little bit about me, has a link to the syllabus maybe. Um, so that's what I'm gonna set up here. Okay. So to set up your pages, what you need to do is go to the section on the left here that says pages. Okay, now I haven't created a page yet. Um, now, if you're working from your Blackboard course, as I mentioned, if you did use the editor in Blackboard to create page content or um, content uh, pages, then those will appear here as your pages. Okay, but since this is a fresh course, I'm not going. Now I can actually import my welcome page from Blackboard if I wanted to, the same way I imported that quiz. So you could do that, um, or you can create your own page. I'm going to just show you how to create your own page, um, just so you know how to use the the tools in Canvas um, instead of importing it over. Okay. So it says no page is created yet. And you can click the add one link, or you can click plus page over here on the right hand side. Okay. And the first thing you want to do is you want to title your page and I'm going to call it welcome. Okay. And then down here we have what's called the, um, the rich, what do they call? They have a name for it, rich content editor. And the rich content, they call it the rich content editor because yeah, you can put text in here, but you can also format your text and you can also put objects in here like pictures and, and documents and links and things like that um, in your pages, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just put the text that I want in my page. And I have the text right here in Notepad. Okay. So here's the text that I want on my page. It says what the course is, um, what semester, right? My name has my contact information and it has a little blurb down here about the course, okay? So this is text. And as I mentioned, you could go ahead and, right, just with like any text editor, you can format the text. So if you wanna bold it or underline it, right? You can do that too. Okay, so I'll bold a few things. And you can also put uh, pictures in here. So if you wanna put a picture of yourself, you click on the images button right here. Okay, it's gonna tell you to upload the image and you can just drag and drop it or you can click to bring up the, um, to browse the computer. I'll just do a drag and drop. All right, so I have my picture here. There we go. And just hit submit. Okay, here it is. Yeah, it's a little too big, but right, just like Blackboard, if, you, if you're familiar with the Blackboard tool, it's very similar. It's got sizing handles, so you can size it to how you want. Okay, and that's pretty much it. Um, and everything you bring on to this content editor um, also gets imported into your class as a file, okay? So for example, I also wanna to link to the syllabus, right? So notice next to the picture, picture uh, tool that I just used here, there's a, a button for links. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create a link to the syllabus and I'm actually going to put it right here where I'm talking about the syllabus. I wanna put a link to the syllabus on the word syllabus. So I highlight the syllabus, I click on the uh, link button, okay? And, oh, I'm sorry, this would, be a, this would be a URL, I apologize. That would be a URL. 
Um, what I would want to do is actually upload a document because the syllabus is a document. So I'm going to click on the document button. And again, it's going to say to upload my file. So here's my syllabus right here. So I copy it over. I hit submit. And it creates a link to my syllabus. Okay, now it's going to look a little bit different once I hit save. Okay, right now I'm in the editor. So it's not going to look exactly the way the students see it. Um, so I'll show you that in a bit. Um, and that's it. You can also put in some media files if you want. So you can upload um, video, audio files. This again, as I mentioned, this is a web link. So I'll show you how to use that as well. And, and that's pretty much it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say um, save. Okay, there's some options down here too. Users allowed to edit this page. You can actually set up pages that anyone can edit. So sort of like Wikipedia, right? So if you wanted to create a page that, let's say you have a group project and you want the group to be able to go in and make some edits like in Wikipedia, you can do that. Um, but I just say users allowed to edit this only teachers. Okay. Uh, adding student to do, this would be is if you wanted the student to, um, you know, maybe give a reminder to, hey, look at the welcome page, or if, if it is a shared page that they can edit with their with their group. Um, and I'll show you how to do groups. On, I believe on Wednesday, I'll go over that. Um, you can do add student to do. All that does is on the dashboard, that's the first page you see when you log into Canvas. On the right hand side, it has a to do list, it will just add it there. So the student sees it. Allowing mastery paths. I'm not going to talk about mastery paths. Um, I, I don't use them, um, but a mastery path is a way that you could set up a path for students based on their performance in the class, right? So if you don't have a student that's performing very well, they may have a different learning path than someone that's performing better than them. Um, but again, I, I, I haven't really used that. So um, the, the mastery paths I won't be discussing. So you can do save, you could do save and publish. If you do save, it just means that the, web, the, the page will be saved. If you save, saved and publish, it means it'll be saved and then students can see it as well. Okay, I'll just do save and publish. Okay, so we'll say published up here. Now, if I go back to my pages page, um, this is my page that I just created, it's called welcome. It's got a, a check. Now this is where I can publish and unpublish. Right, sort of like the modules, right? You just click that button and it unpublishes, means the student can't see it, or you can click it and it publishes it, meaning they can see it. Okay. And that's it. So now I have a welcome page. I click on it. This is how they're going to see the welcome page. Um, notice there is a link to the syllabus. When I click on the syllabus, it will open. Here it is. Okay. Also, if I click on the files link, okay, this is where you can upload all your files. And you may notice in my uploaded media, I have the syllabus and the picture that I uploaded to Canvas when I was working with the rich text editor. So you could do it one of two ways. You can work with your files area and upload all your files and then link to them from the rich text editor. Or you can work directly with the rich text editor, bring in what you need there, kind of like how I was dragging and dropping my files in it. And then in addition to putting it on that page, it also took those files and put it here in my files list. Okay. Okay, so now I have a welcome page and that's great. But now when I click home, right, I still see the modules. My welcome page isn't here. So the question is, how do I get the welcome page to show up? So when they click home, they see welcome instead of these modules. Okay. Well, the first thing you need to do is go back to your pages. And here's my welcome page. And I'm going to click on the three dots right here. Okay, those three dots, that's basically the menu button for anything in Canvas. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select use as front page. Okay, use as front page. Okay, and it will put a little front page notification here underneath my welcome title. Okay, and if I go home, right, I still see the modules. So I'm telling Canvas, okay, I'd like to use that welcome page as my front page, 
but I didn't yet set it set it as the the home page. Okay, so to do that, what you need to do is from the home link on the right hand side, it will say choose home page, and I click on this button. And now notice it will say what do you want as your homepage. So you can make your course modules, which is the default, right, as your homepage. Uh, you can make it your syllabus. I'll talk about the syllabus on, on Wednesday. Um, you can make it your assignment list. So if you want to list the assignments in there, you can do that by default. But I want the pages front page, which is the one I just created called Welcome. Now, if you didn't go ahead into your pages page and actually say, I want this my front page, you can do that here as well, right? So it has, notice it says welcome, but you can change it. So if you click change, it just goes right back into here. And then you have to go ahead and just say, you know, make that my front page again. That's the nice thing about Canvas is there's so many different ways to get to the same thing. Um, you know, kind of like I was showing with uploading of the files, right? I don't have to go in the files and upload them and then use them. I could just do it in the rich text edit, bring them in, and then it goes into files also. All right, so I'm gonna say pages front page, I'm gonna say save. Okay, and here it is. So now when students go home, this is what they see. Okay, and now you, and what's great about this with these pages is you can really put links to anything so in, in your course. So even though my link is to a file that I uploaded, maybe you may want to have a nice front page that has all the different modules that they can get to. And to do that, you just go to edit. Okay. And I don't know, you could do something like this. Visit the modules page, right, for your weekly module. Okay, so you, you highlight, so you can just like highlight this and then we can put our link, okay. And I'm gonna say course links and you just click on modules, right? So here's all your course links and um, here, and I'll just say weeks one and two because that's the first one, okay. And that's it. And I think I just close this out Okay, there it is. I'm going to save this. Right, so here, visit the modules page. You click, they click on that and it brings them to the modules. And it brings them to weeks two and three because that's the one I said. So, so you can even, if you wanted to, have a nice home page that has all the different, you know, weekly modules that they can click on from the home page that takes them to that particular module. Um, I'm not sure if this was, you know, I know for the summer faculty, they gave us this growing with Canvas um, uh, course that we could take. And Canvas actually set this up. And I just would like to show you when you click in the growing with Canvas, now they really, they really made it look good with a lot of pictures and stuff, but it's the same thing. They created a page with all these images and they have a modules link here too, but notice they have links to all of these modules or you can click on the pictures and get to these modules as well, okay? So um, so you can make it look really nice if you wanted to. I mean, there's really no limit as far as what you can do. And, and as I said, I mean, this looks like a web page, right? That takes you right into your course. So it's just, an, just some ideas. Oh, I also just wanna mention with Growing With Canvas, um, I'm of course a student in this class. So when I log in as a student, Right, I don't have a, a very busy navigation uh, panel like we saw in my uh, programming course, right? Since I'm a student, they just gave you uh, a link to modules, they gave you a link to the gradebook, and then they have some other link here as well. Right? Very simple. And this is really, to me, ideally, right, how the student should really see it. Because like I said, as long as you put everything in modules, you don't need a link on the side to go to assignments or to go to quizzes or to go anywhere else. Just put them all in your modules, give the student a link to your modules and have them walk through the course as they take it. Um, so this is a nice way of doing it. So what I'm gonna do now, the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my programming class and I'm gonna change the side panel here to only have those uh, links that I really feel the students going to need. Okay. 
So the way we do that is we have to go into our settings for the course. Settings is all the way down here at the bottom. Okay, so if you're looking for settings, it's on the left hand side, all the way at the bottom. Oh, another thing I'd like to show you, one of the nice things that Canvas has that Blackboard didn't have, this is a great improvement over Blackboard, is what's called the student view, right? So in Blackboard, I believe what you had to do is have like a student account to go into to kind of see the way the student does. In Canvas, they give you a student view. And if the button's up in the upper right corner of the homepage, and if you click on the student view, it shows you how the course looks to the student. Okay. So if I was a student and I logged in, this is how I would see it. And you can see there's a lot of links they give the student by default over here on the left hand side. And I really do not want the student to see all these links. Okay. So, and now when you're in the student view, I also want to mention you can do anything as a student. So you can take a quiz. Right in Blackboard, if I wanted to take a quiz like a student, I had to I had to do like a preview of the quiz, and you can do a preview of the quiz in Canvas too. But every time I took a quiz in Blackboard and I submitted it, it didn't go into the grade book. I couldn't grade it. Like I couldn't then take a role of the instructor and grade myself. You can do that in Canvas. In Canvas, you go into Student View. You can go anywhere within your Canvas course. You can take a quiz like your students if you want. And there's actually a test student in a grade book, and you can go into the grade book and then grade that student. Right. And if let's say you want to take the quiz again, you know, I took it, I took the quiz one time as a student. There was something I wanted to change. So I'd like to go in again and take it as a student. You can just click the reset student button and it will reset everything the student, everything you did as a student. So this is a really nice feature. To come out of the student view, you just say leave student view and you go back into the instructor view. All right, so now what I wanna do is I only want those links on the left-hand side that the student's going to see. So I'm gonna click into my settings link here at the bottom, and I'm gonna to go to the navigation tab. Okay, the navigation tab will show me two lists here. The first list at the top are all the links that are visible in my course. And the second list at the bottom are the links that are hidden from the course. By default, the, the links that are hidden are the ones that you would use if you're doing that third party uh, learning platform integration. So if you use Cengage, if you use McGraw Hill, if you use Pearson My Lab, those are all here. Tomorrow, I'm gonna show you how you can use these. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually move these up. But for now, I'm gonna leave all these at the bottom. Okay, I think there may be a question here. Uh, is it important to copy a Blackboard import course into a Canvas course? I, I mean, it's up to you, Gail. If you want, the, the problem is with the Blackboard course, like I was showing you, it just looks very disorganized. So for me, it's easier to do it the way I'm doing it here. So what I, I took the approach is I'm going to just go ahead and work with my blank Canvas course. I'm going to create the modules the way I want to set them up. And then instead of importing everything from Blackboard import course, I'm just going to import just things as I need them. Like, you know, I just earlier today, I took the quiz, right? Because I imported that quiz. So I brought that over. Um, so it's however you want to do it. You know, if you want to work, and I think maybe OLED IT encourages you to work with that BB import. And if you want to work with that and kind of just clean it up and then copy the whole course over to your fall, you can do that, but it's all personal preference. Okay, but like I showed you, whether you copy over, you know, individual items, or if you copy over the whole course, it's it's the exact same steps. The only difference is you just click the selected content as opposed to content when you're bringing it over. I hope that answers that question. All right. So as we saw in the um, in the Canvas course, it was pretty simple, right? Students had home, they had modules, and they had the grades. Um, so I'm gonna kind of keep it the same way. Now, all of these list items here, you can click and drag, okay? So we have announcements. I'm actually gonna keep announcements in here because I'm gonna show you how to use announcements on Wednesday. The assignments I don't need because I'm gonna have links to the assignments in my modules. So I'm going to go ahead and bring the assignments down here. 
Okay, I'm going to hide that. Um, discussions, even though I'm teaching on campus this fall and I won't use discussions, I'm going to keep it here because I'd like to show you how to use discussions on Wednesday. Grades is good. That's the grade book. Another nice thing about Canvas is by default, they give you a link to the grade book. Um, Blackboard did not do that. Blackboard, you had to create the link and link it manually each time. Um, so that's a nice feature. People are the people in the class. Um, they're not going to need to see that. So I'm going to bring that down here too. Uh, files are all the files that are available in your course. Um, now, some of these, it gets a little bit confusing because some of these actually, even though they're at the top part of the list, um, they don't necessarily show up to the student. I don't know if student sees files by default. Let me check. Files may just be for you, even though they appear at the top. Let's take a look. No, the student does see files, but do they see your files? No, they don't see yours. Okay, so you can, I guess, put files in here that you only want the student to see. So maybe there is a use for that, um, but not in my course. So I'm actually going to remove that one too. Okay, so let's get rid of files. Um, the syllabus, uh, I'm gonna keep up because I'm gonna show you how to do that. Uh, outcomes, I'm not going to show. Rubik's, no. Um, quizzes, I'm gonna have a link to the quizzes in my modules, so I don't need to show that link. Um, modules I want, collaborations, no. Um, new analytics, no. It doesn't really matter where you put it at the bottom, but um, item banks. Item banks, by the way, are like, if you have pools of questions, in Blackboard, they they actually your pools in Blackboard actually become question banks. There are question banks and there are item banks. Item banks are more for new types of quizzes, and question banks are for the old classic quizzes. Your quizzes will come over from Blackboard as classic quizzes, and I'll talk more about that tomorrow. So your item banks will probably always be empty. Uh, Google Drive, we'll get rid of uh, Zoom meeting. I'm going to keep my class notebook. Clean. Uh, attendance. And again, I don't use all of these. Um, IT can probably give you a more detailed explanation of, of some of these. I'm going to keep lockdown browser in there. And I guess since, yeah, I don't know if this was actually in the, in the Canvas course. I'm not sure what that is. I'll just keep it for now. Okay, so I'll hit save. Okay, and now if I go home and go into my student view. Okay, so now this is all the student sees. Let's see what this is. Uh, census LTI, pressing access to your account. Okay, I don't really know what this is. So I'm just not going to leave alone for now. All right. So anyway, so this is a good setup. Oh, I don't want them to see pages either. So I'm going to take pages out. I'll just give them links to pages. Okay. All right, so let's go home again. Okay, now there are some things that I actually put in there like announcements that we don't see. The reason why we don't see announcements is because um, there's no published announcements yet. Even modules isn't here yet. The reason we don't see modules is because I haven't yet published the module. So if I leave the student view and I go into my modules, okay, and you'll see it does have the eye icon with the crossover. It means they, the student can't see it yet. As long as you publish a module, then it will be seen by the student. So now, oops, where is it? Should be. I published that. Uh huh. I don't know why it still has the. It says no content. I think it's just a little confused. Not visible person. Well, it does have content, so I'm not sure exactly why. 
if I did a refresh, it would show, but but it should show up as long as you publish your module. But I'll take a look and see why it's doing that. Maybe it's because I don't really have any items in my module. Need to save after you move the links. Um, yes. Yeah, sorry. Well, I don't know if I didn't mention that. Yeah, when you're in your settings, that's a good point. After you make sure you do click that save button. And I do have that in the guide that you'll get today or you should have received, okay. Oh, that's why I still, oh, really? Uh, oh, oh, that's why pages was still there. I did, maybe I didn't hit that save button. Okay, thank you, Will, sorry. Sorry about that. Yeah, so the only thing I'm a little confused about now, and maybe it's because this quiz is kind of an empty quiz and it's not seen as an actual object um, or, or course content. Maybe that's why it still thinks my module is has no content, even though I published it. It's a little odd. I would think it would still be shown, but, but anyway, I'll look into that and then we'll see. Maybe tomorrow when I add some things, it will show up. Um, but that's basically it. So, so right now, um, you know, again, the session will only be an hour, but um, right now how I have it set up, well, I was able to see it there, not odd. But the way I have it set up is I have a home page that has a welcome. Let's see if my modules link works here. Well, that brings me to modules. So I'm not sure why it's not showing up here on the left hand side. Um, but anyway, so I have the home page, I have my modules. And what I'll do tomorrow is I'll go ahead and start showing how we can create assignments, how we can create quizzes, and how we can integrate with a third party platform and put all of those links inside of our modules so the students can then start, right, uh, completing those assignments. Okay. Um, And that's it. And I can also show you tomorrow, I'm gonna to go a little bit into apps. If you're interested in, if you say, you know what, I like how Blackboard works. I like that you can have a link here on the left-hand side that they can click and they can view your content that way. There's actually a way to do that in Canvas, except in the core Canvas course, you can't do that. You have to add an app and I'll show you how to load apps tomorrow too, okay. But that's about it. Um, so I'm about an hour in. Um, that's all I really had planned for today. Does anyone have any questions about anything I showed today? Yeah. Thank, thanks, Renee. Yeah, that that is uh, that's my goal. You know, to really just kind of show you how to set up a course. You know, I know the fall semester is right around the corner, and um, you know. It, it, in my opinion, Canvas is much easier to work with than Blackboard. Um, you can really have your course set up in, in probably a day's time. I mean, my workshop will be three hours in total, um, and I hopefully will have a whole course set up in, those, in that time and, um, and get you started. And if you wanted to, you know, if you want to go in and work more with the pages and kind of make it look better, uh, by all means, you can do that. Um, but again, just you know, just showing the basics here and, and how you can have it set up nice and, and quickly for your for your fall semester. I'm also going to show you a lot of pitfalls or, or just a lot of quirks that you know things that may have worked in Blackboard that doesn't quite work the same way in Canvas. So um, it was really a learning experience for me over the summer, where I was so used to doing things in Blackboard that didn't quite work the same way in Canvas. Um, so those things too, I'll point out as well. And I have a lot of notes in the guide. So if you look at the guide that was sent out today, you should get in your email. I put a lot of notes in there that say, you know, make sure you do this because in Blackboard, you know, this may have just worked, but in Canvas, right, you kind of have to use this workaround. Um, so I'll show you those things as well. Okay, so I guess in the summer, I set my assignments on weekly modules, assignments are completely disorganized, right. This time is assignments, yep. But the modules is messy, yep. So I was hoping one would mirror the other. Yeah, so, so um, yeah, what I can show you, because modules can get messy, especially if, like it got messy for me too, because I had weekly modules,
But then I had like, for instance, you know, in Blackboard, I used to have a link to the final exam and it was very easy. I said, when you need to take the final exam, click on that link, here's the final. Well, now I have modules set up in weekly modules and it's like, well, maybe, you know, when they're ready to take the final exam, it could get lost in there, right? Or if I wanna have them, for instance, let's say I want them to download a particular program like Respondus Browser, you know, where can I put that in a module? Does it really work with my weekly modules or would I rather a link elsewhere? Um, so what I'll show you uh, tomorrow is how, you, if you want to set up a link on the left-hand side, you can do that. Um, so I'll show you that. If for your headings, can you also use pages instead of the headings? And then just add info. Would it be messing up the organizations? Um, well, what you can, well, the headings is just a label. So the headings wouldn't be a link to anything, but if you wanted to, you can add. So for example, um, let's say I want to do a, let's say I'm going to put in a week one module. So let's say I have a week one module here. And this is how um, this is how the Canvas course was actually set up. They put like that introduction page or that welcome page in the module too. So let's say I want to have the welcome page in the week one module. You can just hit add and you can go to page, click on welcome, add item. And now that's in my weekly module. So it's not necessarily a header, but it is a link that they can see and click on. So you can do that, uh, Renee if you want to organize it that way. Can you put pages in with the reading? Yeah, and you could do it exactly the way I just did that, Kevin. So if you had a page, um, so for example, maybe you want to create a page with weekly objectives. Um, you can do that and then just drag and drop it and put it down underneath objectives. You know, and then maybe do a little indent, right? So they can click on, they can see objectives and they click on you know, of course it wouldn't be welcome, it would be an objectives page, click on that and then it will bring up the objectives. Yeah, so then the page comes up. The only thing I don't like about that, and I've done this in my class, I've actually had links to pages in my in my module. Um, you have to, there's like no back button. <laughs> um, so it gets a little confusing. So you have to know to go back and click on the modules link, right? Uh, if, if you follow the trail, it just takes you back to the pages page. So it, it does get a little confusing when you link pages in your modules. So they'll have to know to, to you know, go back to modules to get back to this page. But, um, but yeah, so there's ways to do that. Oops. Oops, now it's not letting me bring it back. Um, but anyway, in the simplest form, Canvas is just a group of modules. And you can create your course that way and, um, and have something ready by the fall. Um, uh, but again, tomorrow I'll go more into the, again, the assignments and the quizzes and things like that. All right. And, I, and I'll look a little more into how to bring your quizzes over. Uh, I know I tried that earlier and I didn't have much success because I was using those questions, uh, pool, pool questions. Uh, so I'll look a little more into that and then um, I'll also show how to bring over an assignment and how to create an assignment from scratch. Not much to it in Canvas, they make it pretty easy. Okay, great. Well, there's no other questions. I'll go ahead and end it here and, and I'll start again tomorrow at, at 10 o'clock. Thanks guys.